everybody. This one is the SM Parpelade. It's a do-yourself style Eurorack 8 step sequencer. It's really cheap and easy to build it. It works with the Arduino microcontroller. And in this video we are going to explain step by step how we can build this model. I'm going to explain a little bit the sequencer. We have here two inputs. The first one is the clock signal and the second one is the reset function. We also have two switches. The first one is to activate the forest function and the second one is to activate the backward function. We have four trigger outputs and we can trigger them using these two lines of switches. In the first line, when we put the switch in a up position, if we turn up, we are triggering the first trigger output and if we turn them down, we are triggering the second trigger output. And with the second line is the same, we can trigger the third trigger and we can trigger the fourth trigger. Okay, we can use this trigger output, for example, to trigger uh, drum models. I have here a kick, kick drum model. I'm going to connect it to the first trigger output and we can trigger it like that. Okay. We have here the two voltage control output. I'm going to connect a VCO to the first output. Oops, this one is the kick drum. <laughs> a VCO. We can see here the eight steps. We can adjust the output voltage using this knob. If we turn the knob to the right, the output voltage goes up. When it is top in the right, the maximal output voltage is going to be 9 volt and top in the left is going to be 4.5 volts. Okay. We also have portamento function. We can see that with portamento it makes like a transition between each step. And we also have the possibility to trigger the portamento using the first trigger output and the third trigger output. For example, I'm going we need to activate this switch and now we are connecting the first trigger output to the portamento in the first voltage control output and the third trigger output with the portamento in the second control voltage. Okay, so now I can trigger the portamento just in the steps that I want. For example, here. And we can see that the portamento is working just in the in the steps that we want. Okay. Also, like I said, the um, forest function reset and the backward function. Okay, that's it. This is the connection diagram. And before we start to build the machine, I want to explain a little bit the diagram because I think it's interesting to understand how the sequencer works. This in the middle is the Arduino microcontroller. It's like the brain of the sequencer. We are going to upload the code and the program is going to control everything. We are using 12 volts from the Eurorack power cable to power the Arduino. The Arduino has an internal voltage control regulator and it's possible to power it using a voltage between 6 and 20 volts and we have 12 volts so it's perfect 
Here we have the four inputs of the system, the clocking, the rest setting, and the switch to control the backward function and the switch to control the four step function. We also have some push buttons connected to the clocking and to the resetting, so we can manually change a step or make a reset function. We have some capacitor connected in parallel with the push button. This is a hardware solution to avoid the bouncing problems. We have also 10K pull down resistor and we also have some diodes connected to the jack socket. This is to allow the current just flowing in one direction and not in the other direction. Then we have here the trigger side and here the voltage control side. We are using 8 digital outputs of the Arduino to control the trigger side and other different 8 digital outputs to control the voltage control side. In the trigger side we can see that each digital output is connected in each step to the switches and also to the LEDs and it's really simple how it works. For example when the sequencer is in the first step the digital output D12 is going to be in a high position and the other 7 digital outputs they are going to be in a low position. When the second there is for example in the second step, the digital output D13 is going to be in a high position and the other 7 in a low position. And like that all the time. So for example when the first step is activated, the 12, the 12 digital output is going to be in a high position. So we are receiving 5 volts from the digital output in the switches and also in the LED. So with the switches in the first line we can send or connect these 5 volts with the trigger out 1 or trigger out 2. And also when the switch is in the middle we are not connecting these 5 volts. With the second switch is the same. We can connect the D12, the 5 volts to the trigger 3 out or the trigger 4 out and like that is in all the steps. We can see also that we have the 1k resistor in the LED, all the grounds connected together of course and also we have the diodes in the switches to allow the current just flowing in this direction. This is to avoid short circuits. Okay. Then with the um, voltage control side the functionality is the same. For example when the first step is activated the, the two digital output is going to be in a high position and the other seven digital outputs in a low position. When the sequencer is in the second step the death rate is going to be high and the other seven low. But in this case we don't have switches, we have potentiometers and we are using this 100k linear potentiometers as voltage divider so we can control the output voltage in each step and this voltage is going to be between 0 and 5 volts. What happens? That the range of 0 to 5 volts sometimes it's not going to be enough to control other models. For example if we are controlling a voltage control oscillator we need at least 0 to 8 or 0 to 9 volts to control all the range of the VCO. That means that we need to amplify this voltage if we want to have a bigger voltage range in the voltage control output. And that's why we are using this basic amplification circuit. This circuit takes the voltage range from 0 to 5 volt, actually 0 to 4.5 volt and it amplifies it to 0 to 9 volt. The gain of the amplifier is going to be between 0 and 2 and we can control it with this 10k linear stereo potentiometer. We are using a stereo potentiometer because we have two different signals. The last stage of the circuit is this one and what this circuit basically makes is it adds portamento to the output signals. We have a 100k logarithmic stereo potentiometer and we are going to control with this potentiometer the charging time of these two capacitors and like that we are going to add more or less portamento to the output signal. We also can activate this switch and when we activate this switch it's going to be possible to activate the portamento just in the steps that we want. 
This is possible because we have here this 4066 digital switch and we are controlling it with the trigger out one and the with trigger out three. Like that, we are going to connect and disconnect the capacitors to the portamento circuit just when we send the triggers from here with the switches. Okay, that was basically the explanation a little bit of the connection diagram. Now we are going to start to build the machine. The first thing that we need to do is upload the code to the Arduino. We are going to need a computer and a mini USB cable. We connect the Arduino to the computer. Then we go and open the Arduino IDE software. We check everything, if it's okay, board, processor, port. Then we need to copy and paste the code. And here, upload. Compiling a sketch. Uploading. Don't uploading. Super. So now the code is in the Arduino and now we are going to start to build the hardware. I'm using this board to make all the connections. It's a little bit too big, so I'm going to cut it in two pieces. The plan is we are going to solder one line of potentiometers, also eight potentiometers like this. And then when we make the holes in the two millimeter thick aluminum panel, we are going to put the board like that and it's going to hold itself. And then we are going to have, we are going to make all the connections in the board like the Arduino and all other components. We make all the connections here and we are going to have the connections going from the connection board to the aluminum panel. I'm going to solder also the ether socket for the Arduino and the other components are going to solder them directly on the board. To bring the power from the Eurorack power supply, I'm using this Eurorack power cable. And what we are going to do is using this type of pins, these small pins, we are going to put solder them on the board so like that, put in like that, and like that. And we are going to solder them like that on the board. And like that, it's possible to connect and disconnect the cable when we want.
Now we are going to follow the connection diagram and we are going to make all the connections. I already made all the connections on the connection board. I followed the connection diagram step by step and now I'm going to make the holes in the aluminum panel, put the other components and connect them together. I already made the holes in the aluminum panel and also painted it and I also prepared the components before I will put them in the front panel. For example, I soldered the diodes in the switches. I also soldered the diodes in the potentiometers and also connected together the 1K resistor in the jack socket and also soldered the 1K resistor in the LEDs. And now I'm going to put uh, all the components in the front panel and I'm going to connect together all the cables and the components. Let's do. So after a little bit of time, I finished it to make all the connections and I also powered it to the power supply and it seems that everything is working, so fine. I used some, I used some hot glue to connect the LEDs to the front panel and as we can see, I connect all the grounds together. We are going to continue making more Eurorack models. So if you are interested, subscribe and see you next time. Bye.